Okay, we're over here on cycling tips, and we're going to look at some of the tech that we saw at Flanders yesterday, men's and women's. Uh, this is by, uh, photos by Ronan McLaughlin, that's the Strava Everesting champion. Uh, so that's the top of some stickers on the top tubes here. This is interesting. Just goes to show you how hookless is a dumb idea. Even the giant riders are using tubular. All right, tubular makes sense for pro riders. Because if you get a flat tyre, the tyre generally doesn't blow off the rim. And you can ride a little bit further on a flat than if you've got a... I mean, if you've got tubeless set up, hookless, good luck riding. Good luck riding. As soon as that tyre goes flat, you, 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 you've got to stop. So that's just dangerous. Hookless is dangerous. So tubular is hookless, but it's glued on. All right, The only hookless I want to use is tubular on a road bike. And make sure it's glued on there. Glued on tight. Um, this little seat cap there. Just going to seat slam back a bit. It's Michael Matthews TCR. It looks like you can see if you zoom in here. Can we zoom in? Oh, there's a bit of like bit to be cricket bat tape. A bit of cricket bat tape on the back of that TCR there. So that's a good indication that the giant... So you can see that tape there. Just to protect the the gouging that can... Here we go there. You can see it there. A bit of protection. So that's a good idea. If you have a TCR or anything like that that has the uh, ISP... Put some cricket bat tape or some 3M helicopter tape around it just to protect it, and it also help take up the slack potentially. And we've got some uh, some forearm padding. That's interesting. Isn't it? That's not a bad idea. If you like that sort of setup, <laughs> look at that. That's that's, uh, that's interesting. I've never seen that before actually. Uh, to that extreme, to that extreme, specialised used to do the bar fat, etc. But uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's, yeah. If it works, if it works for you. Go for it, for sure. And we've got Victor Campenart's bike here. Um, it's a big chain on there. It looks like he's used used a 56, so it's a spare bike out of 58, apparently. So inward levers, some riders using inward levers. Personally, I don't like that, but try it out for yourself and see what you think. I think it's in a position you probably get, have to get used to it. Uh, Campenart's running tubeless tyres. Uh, Again, are riders choosing that, or are they just being told to use that? So it's hard to say. I would use if I was a pro rider, I'd definitely run tubulars. Um, I'd definitely run tubulars. Like I say, now now Raval, I've gone back to tubulars again after ditching it. Now for me, tubulars road doesn't make sense. You just it's too many faffs, you know, too many faffs. The pressure is too high generally for tubulars, and it's leaking, and it's just it's just inconsistent. You know, like, I mean, it's just inconsistent. So these guys are running a 30 mil tire, a 30 mil, um, it's a new S Works tire. Looks all right. Generally, specialized tires are pretty good. I, I rate specialized tires. So it looks like you can run. This is the 11 speed crank with the 12 speed group set. So it looks like you can run uh, 11 speed chain rings. No worries with 12 speed chain. And we also see it here on Bike Exchange, Orica, Green Edge, using 11-speed crank power meter. Maybe the 12-speed power meters aren't in stock at the moment. A lot of Sadal also using the 11-speed crank. Um, but Matthew Van Der Poel has the new 12-speed crank on his bike. Special treatment there. That's the bike Van Der Poel ro road. It looks heavy as, but doesn't really matter because everyone else is on an equally slow bike compared to back in the day of the rim brake models. So it's going to be, if everyone's in the same junk, it doesn't matter too much. Van der Poel running tubeless. Again, do riders choose that? Or is that just how, how it is? Is that, is that a mandate? Is that a mandate? Van der Poel running some quite some wide bars. It looks like 44s. And you can see here how much food they're taking in. Like a 20k, 40k, 60k. Just taking in foods and waters, foods and waters. There's a happy face there, so I'm not sure what, you take then to get the happy face but yeah just just constant hydration constant constant sugar intake otherwise you're going to bonk and get dropped i'm not sure what that richard mill means on the sticker there but uh he, trenton's running an alloy bar stem combo just get that perfect dialed in fit which makes sense also make sure if you're running internal cables like that you put a bit of helicopter tape under there to prevent wear and tear on the stem looks like it's some 3 3d printing there a little adapter again tubular so it looks like uae seem to have 
you know, a bit of freedom there for riders to choose what they want to a degree. Terpstra running an old school traditional drop bar. Nice colour on that on the SL7. Looks pretty. It's a junk bike, but the paint looks good. And you see here, very, it's got straight post and that seat slammed more forward. You know, I found my SL7, I couldn't really get that aggressive forward position. I mean, you had to buy a new seat post, but with a 27.2 tarmac, you can just flip the post and get an even more aggressive setup. What's that? Jam, look at that. That's a hundred. <laughs> what is that? Man, I've never seen that before. This dude's, so Jonas Rutsch is 197 centimeters tall, 170 mil custom stem. That is epically huge. That's classic. Again, you want to make sure you put something there to protect the metal from getting rubbed by the cables because it will rub and rub and rub and cause a failure. But that, that I think that takes the record for longest stem I've ever seen. Have you ever seen a 170 mil stem? That's epic, man. That's epic. So yeah, that's a uh, classic. All right, we've got uh, some new helmets there from Laser. Nice dark color that makes you hard to be seen on the road. I think if you're gonna run a helmet, run a uh, something with visibility. I mean, a race doesn't matter too much, but out in training for sure, for sure. Disc brake only, Malaysian made rims. Um, so there's some silicon going on there for extra aero benefits. It's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea. That's a good, whoever spotted that is a, that's a good detail. Look at those heavy Cervelos, man. S5 Cervelos is so heavy. Imagine the mechanic's job having to service those headsets and stuff. Oh. That would be an absolute pain in the ass. Trying to get a dial bike fit as well. Near impossible. Near impossible compared to a standard Cervelo, you know, with just a standard bar and stem. So the new Durace rims, they look, uh, you know, pretty average. Made in Malaysia. Do the job, I guess. 54-40 combo. So interesting to see bigger chain rings. Speeds are faster these days. So this is where they can bed in <laughs> bed in this, the, the rollers that's interesting that's just extra work again it's just extra work extra work you know it's just just extra extra faff it would be cool if the riders you know like the riders got to choose what equipment they always wanted there was no you know like sponsors go here's, this is what we have on offer you guys you girls choose what you want that would be really cool you know like, like sort of back in the day it was a bit like that like riders had a bit more freedom to choose what their sponsors had there wasn't as these mandates like we have now so it's in the end the consumer loses and the brands will lose over time as people lose interest in cycling because maintaining a disc brake road bike is just so stupidly expensive now more than it has to be and the extra far from travel with it and the disc pinging and rotors warping on your road bike it's just it's extra drama, extra faff, you know, getting a headset service. It's just, it's not making the vibe enjoyable. Like, when someone hands me a bike and says, hey, can you do my headset, do my rim brakes? I'm like, yeah, man, like, how much? I said, do it for free, you know? Like, it's a pretty basic job. You know, if you want me to pull you apart your hub bearings and stuff, okay, that's a bit, bit more faffing. But in terms of just doing your brakes and your gears, man, your headset, like, this is still now. Like, I could do it at the park with a multi-tool <laughs> while waiting for fucking Jimmy or Jane to turn up. But these, like, this is a, you know, I used to love going to cycling, the websites over the years, and looking at all the photography, like, cycling news and cycling tips, all the, the new stuff, and now, like, I go on there to report it and as, a, as a journalist, as a professional journalist, but I'm not excited as a, as a cyclist, I'm like, oh, this, this, this equipment's crap, you know, this equipment's crap, um, it's just, and then I put my fourth, my debate and argument, and the noobs out there who've only owned maybe two or three road bikes in their life and haven't ridden much more than that, they're like, oh, you're wrong, you're, you're wrong, the, 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 the pros chose this, 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 and it's like, oh, man, like, you're not going to be riding in a couple of years' time, dude, like, just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm riding for life, I've been a rider for life, always will, always it will be, you know, like, I've never had a driver's license, you know, cycling's what I know, the most of anything, so it's, you know, these noobs come, come out and tell me I'm wrong, <laughs> it's just like, man, you're, you're, the, you're the sucker who's just paid, God knows how much you paid for that bike that's made in China. You know, and you think it's made in the US or Italy. You know, like, dude, you're a noob. And I'm glad you're cycling. But don't try and pretend that you know more than me. Because you don't when it comes to cycling. 
Just sit back and listen. And pay attention. And I'll, I'll save you money. I'll save you faff. I'll boost your performance, man. If you listen to me and take my advice, you don't have to like me, but if you listen, to, if you take action on my advice, you will increase your performance, man. Your life will be easier and more simple and your recovery will be better. Your performances will be better. If you listen to my advice, take action on it, you will have a better life experience. Doesn't matter if you like me or not, you will have a better life experience. And that's my goal. I'm trying to help you, dude. Relax.